Good afternoon, Fred friends. And I really, really have something different today. And uh, lo and behold, I forgot all about this guitar. I, uh, I was working on something earlier, and I was going through my phone book looking for a number for someone, for someone I needed to get some guitar parts off, and a name popped up. Uh, a client of mine fell, and I thought, oh crikey, he come up last week, he dropped a guitar off. Where's that guitar he dropped off? And I'm going to show it you. And this really is something different. I've never seen it like it. And it's, look at it. What a great piece of kit. And it's a Godan. Godan LGX, I believe a model. It's a Godan LGX SA bracket S. And it's a very, it's a quite a remarkable guitar. And I forgot it, I forgot it was here. This is 1800 quid worth of guitar here. So anyway, Phil bought it in. And it's, there's a couple of problems with it, it's got a ding there. Um, and it just says, get the one to have, I want it set it up proper, whatever it needs, do it, sort it out. Anyway, when he, when he got it out its bag, box, well case, the case down there for it. When he got it out its case, I noticed a chip on the back of the headstock. I said, what have you done there? He didn't even know he'd done it. He says, Cracker, where's that from? Is it down here? He didn't even know he'd done it. So I said, I'll try and drop fill that in with some epoxy and stain. And I'm going to try and fix it up, just to make it look not chipped. It also appears to be scorched at this end here. That looks like some kind of scorching there. And I've just noticed, it's a ding here. Just a small ding. Right where my finger is, this finger. So, it's one of the things I'm doing all the time with guitars I have in I'm absolutely checking them from top to bottom. I'm checking every ding, every scratch, every scrape. Uh, there's a chip there on this horn just here. Next to my finger, don't know if you can see that, but it's there. Just to cover myself, because I had a guitar in not too long ago, and uh, it was an impossible fix, but I'd, I'd done a fret level on it, and I realised halfway through the neck were twisted. And because I'd done the work, I had to replace the neck. I actually went and bought a new neck from a guy. Cost me 109 quid for a new neck. The job was only worth 75 quid, so I got paid 75 quid, bought him a new neck for 105 quid. And the reason I bought him a new neck is because it was my fault. Because if I'd have noticed the twist on the neck, I'd have said to him, can't fix that. You know, buy a new neck. But because I'd started work on it, then noticed it. You know, ball's in my court, the guitar was in my care, and I didn't notice it. So now I check guitars, every single thing, before I even start recording the video. Uh, this one, I haven't actually, so I've made myself out to be a liar right now. But there's dings here, there's a ding here on the back of the neck, look. There, but Phil will know about his marks here. Uh, this is a you can buy this guitar brand new if you look around, you can buy it for £1,600. Now, for a bolt on neck, that is a lot of money. But like I say, it's got some kind of built in synth. I don't know what this does, I didn't even look that bit up. But you've got inputs here, look, you've got regular guitar import, you've got the piezo import, and you've got the synth well, not import, output, whatever you want to call them. So, you've got your regular guitar jack, you've got the piezo jack, and you've got the synth jack. A uh, nice string through system there. I don't know what's wrong with it. I've got absolutely no idea. I'm hoping there's nothing long, wrong with it electrically. Because if there's anything wrong with this electrically, it's going back. This will go over to Russell Salt. He's the guy I send electric. When you've got a weird electrical job to do, I'll send it to Russell Salt out over in uh, his North Mansfield. It's a few miles away from me. But he, in return, sends all his fret work to me. Because he can't do fret work. I can do electrical work, but not this kind of electrical work. These, these are all synth switches and everything here. I don't even want to look under that. I'm just not interested in going under there. Electrics are not something I am fantastic. I can do a basic guitar, but that's it. So, this guitar, what do I know about it? It looks like, well, some, I've been told it's a mahogany body, mahogany neck. You've got a triple A maple flame top. I put my life on that being an ebony fingerboard there. Um, the knot is going to be some kind of compound resin, probably a tusk nut or whatever. I don't know if any frets need work. Um, these are, you'll have a volume and a tone. This I believe is, I did hear what this was when I just watched the video upstairs and now I've completely forgot. Could be a volume for the piezo, I'm not sure. Could be a blend volume, I don't know. I'll have to go and check that. So I've not really done my own work on this, but what I am doing is I'm definitely giving it a complete setup any frets are high, I will level any frets that need doing. I do believe this is a 25 fret guitar. No, it's not. 
absolutely not a size of 22 fret guitar. The reason that got me there is there's two dots on this fret just here, look, so I assume that was a 24 down there. It's not a 24, it's a 21. So it's a 22 fret guitar. 15, 17, 19, 21, 22. Confused with that scale length, I've got no idea. I'm going to have a guess at a Gibson scale length, but I could be completely wrong. Yep, I'm completely wrong. It is a it's a fender scale length, 25 and a half inch. That's good. So I'm going to basically appraise it. This guitar, I'm going to go across my fret rocker in a minute. Also, I've got the next set with Tessie Electrics, blah 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 blah. Some more things I'm noticing with this guitar. There are a couple of dings in the Seymour Duncan pickups here, just on the edges there. Uh, I like to just get these things pointed out and just to show that you know these were there before. Anything else, and because this is one of Phil's, and Phil trusts me anyway, and as a returning customer, he's bought a lot of guitars to me. He's going to trust whatever I say anyway. But in future, any guitars I get in, they are going to be absolutely thoroughly inspected. And one good thing, though, another turn up for the books is I'm having quite a few guitars shipped to me nowadays. I've just sent one back to uh, somewhere down south uh, today. I've got a lad coming over from Merseyside uh, at the end of the month. He's coming over on a Sunday, drop a guitar off. Uh, so this is all good. So, you know, if you want to post your guitar summer, by all means, do so. Uh, I always ensure my work 100%. If you're not happy with the work, and I agree that you have reason not to be happy with my work, I will give you a complete refund, or I will sort that the guitar out at my own expense. Uh, so you have nothing to lose. Um, in fact, I'm the only person who has anything to lose. If you say something's not right, you know, I've got to do something about it. The thing is, if, if you say something's not right and I know it's right, you're not going to get anything out of me. But I do stand by my work anyway. So, that is it. This guitar, don't know a lot about it. I've just read a couple of things on uh, on uh, Google. So, I'm going to crack on and see what it needs. Back later. So, I've had it plugged in. All the electrics appear to work. These things do absolutely nothing in normal guitar mode or on piezo mode. I've been in the normal socket, I've been in the piezo socket. Piezo socket's well weird, because these pickups still seem to work, or the pickup selector still seems to work. Just in here, uh, just the normal guitar socket, you go in there, if you've got any volume on this uh, EQ, whatever it is up here, or EQ booster, you don't get any silence when you turn the volume right off. You have to have the volume off on that, then you can just use these nut pickups as normal. Blah, 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 blah. Um, to me, Piezo sounds naff on these. It sounds naff on an electric guitar. It is not my thing at all. But the thing is, I would never buy a guitar like this myself. I don't want all that bull crap on there. All them weird sounds. I'm just, just give me a straight guitar for my Elix and I'm happy as hope. Uh, and six strings as well, by the way. Not seven or eight or anything weird like that. Just give me a straight guitar. That's all I need. Acoustic for acoustic, electric for electric. That's how I play. Uh, so, totally not my cup of tea, this. But the electrics appear to be working. This input socket is a bit loose, I've got to tighten that up. It appears that um, the electrics don't need any work, which is great. I'm just about to check the frets for level. What I've noticed is there's a massive amount of relief in here. Much more than I want to play with. Uh, there is, God, there's got to be, there's a millimetre of relief under the six, seven frets here, eight fret. Stupid amount, so I'm going to tighten up the truss rod just a little just to straighten that out a little bit, and once it's straightened out, well not straightened out completely, it obviously needs to set up this guitar, I've not checked the intonation yet, I'm just about to remove, if I'm right screwdriver, the truss rod screw, so I can get at the truss rod, see what kind of uh, adjust, adjuster we've got on there, I would imagine it's going to be a hex nut, pretty much similar to a, uh, a Gibson or an Edwards or something like that, uh, but I would be completely wrong, it is actually, it is an Allen key and it looks like it's a 5mm. That's really surprised me, because I think Allen key truss rod adjusters are a little bit cheap. And it's kind of the, uh, there you go, just crack that a little bit. I've just loosened that, ever so, just a quarter of a turn, just to get me. Have I gone wrong way there? Probably have. I'm going to tighten that a little bit. Want a little bit less relief in there. I like to hear a uh, truss rod crack a little bit like that. It means it's not been touched before. And there you go. I've given that a quarter turn the other way. And that really ought to be enough. That's more than enough. That's fantastic. Now we've got the relief to be round about 
0.6 mm that is as, as much as we want there what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen the string slightly strings are these are like a weird coach it's always a hybrid string you told me about these they're like a cross between an electric and acoustic string and they're coated I don't know if you can see them from where you are blah 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 I think it's told me to stick a set of normal strings on there and if I was going to do that I would be sticking a set of tens on there Probably go with some, I can give some with Dario's, I'll stick some slinkies on there. Well, slinkies aren't tens, but I'll stick the equivalent of a 1046 on there. I've got plenty of sets brand new. So, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to loosen the strings just a little, just so the neck is straight. Now, I'm going to go across with a fret rocker, just check the frets, just to see if anything needs working. Probably have to loosen these strings right down. These strings sound horrible, can you hear them? Sound dead. Horrible strings, they're like a, got like a nylon coating on them. Now I'm one of these people, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm all for technology and uh, upgrading stuff and making stuff better, but if it's ain't broke, don't fix it. They're always, I was gonna say wanking about, but they are always wanking about with stuff that works. I don't, I don't get it, I don't get it at all. You know, with proper players, we just want proper guitars. Anyway, that is the next straight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go across with a fret rocker off camera, and I'll come back and let you know how that goes. So fret-wise, this guitar is fine. I've got the neck straight. Bit across with a fret rocker. Uh, there are two frets giving a very slight rock. Nothing to worry about. That's all covered in an intensive setup. So this guitar just needs basically. Just needs an intensive setup. It's all it's going to have. I'm going to not fill a little bit of money off because he's not having a lot of fret work done. Um, so he's going to be really, really happy with that. Don't need to do a lot of work. I'll give it a good clean. I'll go in there, check the electrics, make sure well nothing is scratching. But I'll give the the, uh, the pots a little bit of a squirt with some switch cleaner. The frets will be polished. There's two I've got to do definitely. Once I get the strings off properly and check, there might be a couple more high ones, but if that's the case, it doesn't matter. And they're all going to be included in the price anyway. So just a couple of frets need work. I'm going to put a new set of strings on there. Um, pretty straightforward. I'll tighten all the nuts and bolts, make sure everything's tight. Make sure these are all tight. Uh, the screws on the back are tight and the screws on the edges, we're getting enough. We're not getting too loose or too tight on the uh, adjusters, the tuners there. Uh, I do need, I think the truss rod now is where it needs to be. I'm just going to check the intonation. These strings are coming off. They're like a, uh, they're like a flat wand, but for an electric. Really, really weird. I think Phil told me what they were, but he wasn't too happy with them anyway. I'll just stick a set of normal electrics on there myself. Going to have a full proper setup. Um, I'll check the intonation. Nothing I can do about the radius, but I can do something about the action. Guitar looks and plays fine. Certainly not my cup of tea on what I'm doing. Free is I'm going to fix this chip in this neck here. Uh, I'll show you a bit more of that when I get to it. It will be a neck off scenario. That's why I'm charging for intensive setup. So it'll be a neck off scenario, and I have to get it all clamped up, get this clamped so I can drop some epoxy in there, at, and it's, it's got to be perfectly straight. So when it settles, it's not going to be too proud of the um, the actual headstock area. All it's going to do is going to, I'm going to drop it in. It's just going to look black. It won't be 100%, but I think we'll get it at least 95, 96, 97% perfect, you know, which is what we're looking for. Uh, if you wanted that finishing, you're just going to take it somewhere else and leave a charge in. Probably charge 100 quid. I'll charge in a tenner for that, so there you go. So uh, I shall crack on with the work and update as necessary. So I've been across this guitar with a fine tooth comb. Check the frets, check the neck, check the action, check the intonation. I've reset the intonation. Reset the action. Um, got a tuner on there. Great little tuners, these by the way. The Deodario Elite. It's the best tuner you will get. Fuller, 360 degree turn in any angle you like, and this is the most accurate tuner I've ever had on a guitar neck. Much better than the Snark I had. Absolutely brilliant. Reason 11 quid. It is a Deodario Elite tuner. Go and buy one, you will not get better. I'm not sponsored by these, by the way. Not sponsored by it. I'm sponsored by God. That's it. Um, so there you go, this guitar it needs is complete setup, new set of strings on there. Something else it needs doing is the nut slots are really quite high. We're quite high above the first fret. I'm going to cut these nut slots a little bit deeper as well. So it's having a full setup, it's having a full works. 
The intonation's been done, the tuning's been done, the action's been done. Uh, the neck, I've reset the neck. I just need to cut the fret slots, remove the strings. I will tighten up, all, loosen and tighten all of these gubbins, all to do with the tuners. I'll clean the guitar from head to foot. Uh, I will level the frets that need levelling. There's two at the moment. They could maybe three, four, or five when I've got the neck, when I've got the strings off and checked it properly. No big deal. The electrics are fine. Everything else, it just needs a good clean. I will polish the frets once I've levelled the ones I need to level. All of them will get a polish. Uh, the, two, the two or the few that need doing will get a recrown and a polish. The fingerboard will be treated with mineral oil, especially formulated mineral oil for rosewood and for ebony. So it's going to get the full works. I'll clean it up where it needs cleaning up. And I'll tighten up what needs tightening up. And then the last job I will do, in fact I'll take the tuners off when I do the network. Get the tuners off, I'll get it all clamped up and we'll fix that big chunk missing. I can't do anything about the burn there, can't do anything about that, but that chunk we can get that fixed. Uh, Phil didn't even know that was gone, so we don't know where the chunk is, otherwise we could have just glued that back in and uh, made it as invisible as possible. But we're going to fill it with epoxy, we're going to fix it that way, it's the only way I can do it. And all being well, that should be good. So I will crack on with this. It's going to be, uh, it's not going to be this week, it's going to be next week sometime, this guitar. But we'll give it full works, we'll get it all back up to spec, and um, the job will be a good one. So, back with the go Dan. Um, this is the area, I'm actually holding the camera at the moment, this is the area I'm going to drop fill with some epoxy. I'm going to stain some epoxy, mix some epoxy up, draw some black stain in there. I'm going to tape around the edge just to stop an overflow and all I'm going to do is just drop into this hole just right up to the level. I've got the guitar, I've got it level both ways or as level as it can be by eye. I'm going to check it with a small spirit level in a minute, see how we are. I'll tape around this edge, just so we don't get any overspill on the edge, and I'll just drop some epoxy into this hole until it comes level with the guitar. Chances are, it, when you get close up, you'll tell it's been done, but at least it's going to be solid, and it's going to look the part. I'll come back and show you how that went in a bit. Good morning, Fred friends. Just back from the hairdressers, um, but moving on with this Godan guitar, and this is by no means a professional fix on the headstock but I have filled this area basically I had it strapped up in a vice uh, and I just taped around the edge stop any overspill I just dropped some um, epoxy resin in there uh, with some black stain and we've just leveled it up a bit I know it doesn't look fantastic it's not professional repair uh, because you know I don't have the resources to do that and I don't have the time and I'm not being paid for it just wanted to show that we've fit, filled that chunk in uh, Phil didn't even know he'd done that on the guitar, so that will do. At least the guitar looks the part now. So I'm now going to move on to fret levelling part of the process. There was only a couple of frets that were high, so might be an easy, much easier one than I thought initially. This one, but I'm going to crack on with that. Um, I'll come back and show. Maybe I'll show a little bit of that shortly. But I want to get this one wrapped up today. Beautiful, beautiful ebony fingerboard there. I might even go. Once I've got some uh, mineral oil on there, I might just might just drop a little bit of stain in there because it's just lining up down these edges. It might even be a piece of stained rosewood. I don't know, I've not looked at the specs of this guitar. But anyway, we'll get it all built back up today. I'll come back shortly with another update. So, regarding high frets, we have six high spots. Not majorly high. We have one small spot there, about a centimetre. We have a third of a fret here. Third of a fret there, centimetre of a fret there, two thirds of a fret there, two thirds of a fret there. So I'll show you the easy one and the more difficult one. Just need to get that right. Right, I'm using three files for this. I'm using my Swiss number four cut file just to remove the height I need. That's all I need. Two or three very light strokes. Listen, we still have height there. Always take off less than you need or less than you think. That's going to be close. Have a, just a little there, but on the edge, we're pretty much fine. 
that has now altered how this one is in relation to that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the end of the file and I'm just going to level these three or four just at the edge just to bring them all in line with each other. Not major work. I'm going to go back three frets, that's fine. A little bit on that edge, but that's now fine. When we do one fret, it's always going to alter the ones next to it ever so, ever so slightly. We just need to go... I'm thinking that will be just about right. Always delicate strokes, always clean the file. So a little bit. I think we'll find that that is just about it. With frets, we we're talking very fine margins, so we're always at fine strokes. Still a little high there. Again, always wiping file. And there you go, that fret is now level and the ones behind it are also level. So what I'm going to do is now, go to my three cornered file, one flat side. I could have used this flat side for filing the top, but this is not a fine, as fine a cut. This is probably a number two cut. This is a number four. This is a super fine file. It's not going to leave scratches anywhere. If it does, just very fine. What I'm going to do is a normal three cornered file. Just bring those edges over. I don't have to explain how this is used. Well, I would do actually. Across, then just angle into the fret. Just to create that curve. I'm going to do this one. The grand, the grand edges, so we're not going to cut into the fingerboard because this one's not taped up. This only needs a tiny, tiny bit. I'll be back in a second. Right, sorry about that, uh, telephone was ringing, I didn't answer it, it's not, it's not as much as a not a number I know, it's an 020 number, I never answer those because they normally always spam, and if it's important they'll leave a message. Anyway, back on to this, I have just gone across with the three edged crowning file, we're absolutely fine there on these two frets we've touched, uh, like I say, even though I've got six frets to do, once you alter one fret, it's probably one next to it could also then uh, appear to be out of whack because if we're taking material off that, it will alter how these two react to that one. Because first we're just checking this one's high, then we have to check back and that we because we take material off here, that might also be a little bit high and that was the case. But now we've done that, we're going to use the two and a half mil side of my crowning file and we're just going to profile the fret just to remove any burrs if we're any there and this one again just at the end there we're going to make more work than we need to do so that's that done and what I will do is that is not going to need a complete polish it's just going to need a quick run over with a little bit of uh, super fine steel wool I'm going to do this one ever so gently because I've got no tape under it I don't want to get into the fingerboard but that's done and this one That is that fret levelled. Now there was only one centimetre of height extra on there, but that one's now done. All the frets are going to get polished anyway. I'm now going to move on to these five here. And there's one hidden, it's actually in the vise. Now you see when I get a neck in a vise, it's padded each side so we don't mark the wood in any way, even though these are padded anyway, uh, these vise grips. So I'm going to move on to these one, two, three, four. This one. Just about half a fret there. Needs work. That edge is really high there. Well, it's not mega high. So same again. File. Wipe the file nice and steady. can just see where there's some indentations on this fret as well. So we're going to remove all those as well. So a little high on that centre bit there. So 
That's beautiful. I'm going to check the next one along. And it's not altered anything. So just that fret there was high. This one's fine. I'm going to move on to the next one. I'll do the crown in. Afterwards, now you know. Well, in fact, I'll do it now just to show you one more time. Crown in file. I'm going to do it vertical. Then I'm going to roll. When I'm doing this side, the side closest to you, I'm going to roll the file this way. See, I'm just slightly rolling away from you now. And I'm going to come do the opposite side. I'm going to roll this towards the fret or towards the camera. And that is just making sure we've got that beautiful crown there. I will then I fret just to make sure it's got that beautiful D shape, which is beautiful. And finally, remove any burrs, clean. Profile in file, and across the whole fret, reprofile. That's that font, that's that fret done. I'm going to check its level. Beautiful. I'm going to check how it is in relation to the fret up next fret along and fine. So that altering the height to this one has not done anything to this fret. It, these are all in line, and these are in line as well. That's absolutely fine. I don't have to touch that one. So I'll move on to fret. This will be the third one. So I'm just going to Polish this one in. So that's it, that's two done, four more to go. Uh, as I explained earlier, even though I've got six to do, I had to do a little bit on that one as well. It is possible that when I do this fret, it could alter these two slightly, how they are in relation to this after I remove material. So even though I say I'm doing six frets, I might end up doing 12, might end up doing 18, you just never know. And this is why normally I wouldn't do six frets by hand. Once I get to six frets need a little bit of work, I would skim across the whole lot. But in this case, there's only six. There's only a tiny, I like this one's very marginal. It's just a tiny rock on that one and there's a tiny rock on that one. So it's not major, major work. So I'm going to crack on. I'm going to get these three done. I'll be checking the ones next to them, making sure they're all fine as well. When I have this final one to do, I have to take that advice, move my neck along a little and get in to get some tape around this one and get into that one. I will come back and show you the results um, once I've finished. So with frets now all levelled and crowned, not the old or not all of them. I didn't really have to alter much more than the six I mentioned. I did have to do that one the seventh, and I did it. I told to start a couple more. So in, in the end, I probably worked on about nine frets, but we're talking very very tiny margins. That's the last one I've just done. Uh, I'm now going to move on to. Um, Mineral oil, uh, get treating the fingerboard with, with mineral oil, called lemon oil, it's not lemon oil, it's mineral oil, especially formulated by these companies who know what they're doing. Dunlop for instance, Deodario, uh, PV Make their own, this is a Kaiser brand. Uh, fretboard conditioner, uh, it will not only remove the grime, it will also clean and nourish the wood. It's called lemon oil just because it has a hint, we put a little bit of lemon oil, uh, lemon scent in there just to make it smell nice, that's all it is. So I'm just going to light coat it, rub it all in, let this do its magic and soak in. And while that is doing its work, it can be a bit of a grimy dirty job it's because I'm rubbing this on where people's mucky maulers have been and their sweat and their grime. But you know, I wash my hands. I've got gloves up a bit. I don't wear them often. I don't really wear them when I get a really horrible guitar and I've had a few, I'll tell you that. But anyway, that's in there. I wipe my hands. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to polish the frets and I'm going to use a fret guard or a fingerboard guard. It's just a matter of placing that over the fret and I have a wider one for when we get down here. And we will go and get a fresh piece of uh, super fine steel wool. One fine one, here you go. The finest steel wool. And it's just a matter of going just to getting right into the fret, right into the corners there and just going across the whole fingerboard till all the frets are done. So we're not going to mark the fingerboard in any way by using these protectors. It's just giving these, just removing any grime, any tarnishing, you always get tarnishing on frets, even stainless frets tarnish a little. 
I'd, I would suggest doing this maybe every couple of months, every spring change, it's not going to hurt you. You know, treating your fingerboard, I recommend every six months, if you're a really heavy player, every three to six months. If you're an intermediate player, don't play that much, maybe once a year. But, you know, if you don't, your wood becomes brittle over time, and when it comes to you need a fret job and I'll pull your frets out, it's going to bring chips out as well. And it's going to make three hours extra work for someone like me. If indeed that is the case. So I'm going to crack on, get all of these done. Once it's done, I'll go between the frets with the steel wool, remove any grime, and I'll give another coating of mineral oil, let that soak in, treat the wood. And once that is done, I'll clear out these nut slots. I have some small like a builders file kit. And uh, I did initially bring, buy these to uh, cut frets slots, but they don't cut anything. They're not sharp enough, but they are fantastic. Really thin files here, look. Fantastic for getting the grime out of a nut slot. Blah 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 blah. So I will do that when I have finished the neck and fingerboard. So eventually I ended up using my um, nut slotting files to uh, just clear the nut slots out a little and get any grime out of there. Could have been pencil for all I know. But I've dropped a little, a very tiny sliver of uh, mineral oil in these slots. Um, wiped away all the excess. I would imagine this is a tusk nut anyway. It's self lubricating, so it's fine. But I just want to show the neck now before I put it back on the guitar. All the frets have been leveled, been polished, the fingerboard has been treated. The neck now actually looks like it should should look. Uh, just give a quick glimpse of the repair I did on the back there. Not a professional repair. I just basically dropped some epoxy in the big chip. Uh, I mixed the epoxy, mixed some um, wood stain with the epoxy. Actually, some of the uh, Stunning stains from Crimson Guitars, a black. I recommended to get this because uh, I have some ebony stain from, uh, I think it's Rustings, is it? And it doesn't go quite as dark, but I'm trying to darken my fretboard on my uh, my own Explorer. And a friend of mine, one of my good clients, he says, uh, get the Crimson Guitar stuff. He says, you want a black fingerboard, this will blacken your fingerboard. So give it a try. There's only about 10 quid delivered. Not extortionate. Quarter of a litre there. It's going to last a long time. So quite a bargain there. But anyway, this neck is now ready to go back on the guitar. So I'm going to put the neck on the guitar. I'll stick a set of um, tens on there. See what I've got in stock. Tens I've got on crack. I was fine by some some more. Some dear dear areas and I've got some tiny balls. It won't matter which it has. I'll probably stick the earnings on there. So I'm down to one set of tens left and three sets of nines. So I've got to go and order some more strings. So I'm going to get the guitar back together. Get some strings on it. Uh, does it want tens on here? Yeah, it says tens up there. I'll move my whiteboard up there. Where well, my current jobs on. Uh, everything goes in my book, my black book. But things I've got on at the moment, or I've got planned this week, all go on the whiteboard. And the whiteboard is looking pretty okay at the moment. Not too much on there. Certainly not too much on there, which is brilliant. Uh, but also not too little. How good is that? So get this guitar back together. Get some strings on, and I'll come and show you the finished guitar. And here we are, friend, friends. And it's a good day. It's before midday on a Saturday morning. I've been to the hairdressers, I've been cut, my beard trimmed. And uh, I'm off out tonight to a party. Not to go, I'm going to get suited and booted. Nice suit, nice shirt, nice pair of brogues, you know what I mean? And uh, this Godan guitar is finished. And don't get me wrong, it's an exceptional piece of kit. It's a very, very well made guitar. And now it's had a fret level and a setup and a bit of a repair on the headstock chip there. Like I say, if I'd been paid for that, I'd have done that perfect, I'd have done that a bit more, a little bit better, and we'd have got it all sanded off and, and you wouldn't have even known it had been done. But to say it's been filled with a bit of epoxy, it's really not a bad job at all. So I don't know how he's done that. Actually, that looks like scorching to me. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't even know if he's aware he's done that. But anyway, the guitar is set up, the action is beautiful. Low E string above the 12th fret, 1.75 millimeters. The high E string above the 12th fret, just slightly under 1.5 millimeters. So beautiful, beautiful action. A little bit of relief. Um, the fingerboard has been oiled. The frets have been leveled, recrowned, and polished. They look beautiful. I recut the nut slots, tidied them up, got all the gunk out of there, put a bit of lubrication in there. I've tightened up all of the tuners. Anything that's, tight, uh, that's adjustable, the front screws, the screws in the tuners themselves and the screws at the back have all been tightened. The um, strap pins have been tightened. 
I've set the action, the intonation, I've reset the bridge pickup, it was a little bit high. Still is a little bit high for my liking, but it won't go any lower, so pretty good, but I've levelled that off. There's some wear on this bridge pickup just here where it's been hitting the string, so it was too high anyway. But yeah, looks fantastic. I am so glad that there was nothing wrong with the electrics in this, because that kind of electrical work in there is a little bit beyond what I can comfortably do. And I'm sure if I really put my mind to it, I could do it, but I wouldn't want to be doing that. And I have come across a great guitar electrician in the last month or so. His name's Russell Salt, and he's based, I believe he's based North Mansfield Way. And any electrical jobs like this I get in future are all going to him, and he is sending fret work my way. So it's working absolutely brilliant. Guitar techs are working together for the benefit of everyone else, it looks like there. So, that is this guitar done. I've just texted Phil to let him know it is ready. I've told him I will hear him a mile away. So I'll drop it off if he wants me to, or he can come round here and fetch it. Totally up to him. But it's another one wrapped up for it, friends. So, just before I sign off, I will say check my website, fretfriend.co.uk, even better, facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. -E -E that is facebook.com forward slash N-G-1-7. Uh, all my videos are on there, my rates are on there, what I can do is on there, uh, there are reviews on there, so all good stuff, so go and check that out. Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. So this is me, Victor Christian, your fret friend, signing off. Until next time, boys and girls, good to each other, and I'll see you soon.